Well, Carbuzz did it again. They've gotten simple facts straight up wrong to put Tesla in a negative light. These videos might be feeling redundant at this point, but as long as media outlets like Carbuzz keep making garbage levels of journalism, I'll have to keep calling them out. I'll stop as soon as they stop. For those of you that really like car buzz, I'm sorry, but oversights like this one in the article we're going to look at today are just unacceptable. And it'd be one thing if it was an honest mistake, but considering they keep making mistakes only in one direction, which is against Tesla, we know there's actually intention behind what they're doing. And that makes articles like this even harder to read because it's not that they just accidentally got the information wrong. That'd be totally okay. They could issue a correction and we'd all be on our way. But it's the fact that they're getting the information information intentionally wrong, and that's inexcusable. If I got information this consistently and intentionally wrong, people would rightfully say that I'm a paid shill, and yet when we look at Carbuzz doing that exact thing, lots of people still trust them. So what we're going to do today is shine as bright a spotlight on this media outlet who I've covered many times before and expose the complete and total lack of journalistic integrity that they try to keep hidden from the public. And if you appreciate someone calling out large media outlets like Carbuzz that are consistently putting out false and misleading news to their readers, consider supporting me on Patreon. All right, enough backstory, let's get into the article itself. It's called, Weirdly Named Chinese Car Can Teach Tesla a Few Lessons About Range. So so already they're off to a good start because we know before we even read the article, because I've covered car buzz before, their goal isn't to report on the facts, it's to put Tesla down at every opportunity, presumably because of their advertising ties, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Here's the part of the article I have an issue with. The author says, according to the China light duty vehicle test cycle, the C385 is capable of more than 600 kilometers on a single charge. That's roughly 375 miles, which means this humble humble, oddly named Chinese sedan has more range than all but two EVs currently on sale in the USA. The Tesla Model S long range has an EPA estimated range of 405 miles, while the stunning new Lucid Air Dream Edition has an EPA range of 520 miles. And it's almost comical how clueless the author would have to be if they were actually trying to report the facts to have missed that, but just in case they're watching, I'll spell it out for them. Carbuzz is comparing the Chinese C385's range using the China light duty vehicle test cycle to the Tesla and Lucid EPA standard range. That might sound innocent enough on its surface, but I can guarantee you it isn't. And how do I know? Well, luckily for us, Tesla sells cars into China, like lots of them. And they also have their cars officially tested under the China light duty vehicle test standard, so we actually know exactly what range they get using that standard compared to the EPA. Also, we do need to address the Chinese version Model 3 and the American version do use different battery chemistries, but based on real world use data, the range difference between the two is negligible. When we look at the two versions of the Model 3 sold into China, for example, they get 556 and 675 kilometers or 346 to 420 miles respectively. But if we look at those same models using the EPA standard, they get 430 to 506 kilometers or 267 to 315 miles respectively. What we see here is that the EPA testing methodology is significantly harder for EVs and Tesla's range using that CLTC estimate gets about 30% higher. In the world of EV range figures, 30% is a night and day difference. Just for some reference, the range difference between the shortest range Model 3 and the longest range version is only about 20%. So if you did what this Carbuzz journalist did and compare the shortest range Model 3 with the CLTC standard to the longest range Model 3 to the EPA standard, the shortest range Model 3 would have a longer range. Okay, that something sounded a whole lot better in my head. That probably didn't make any sense. But anyways, if we look at the actual test, it makes sense. The China light duty testing has much more stop and go and slower top speed driving, and the EPA has more fast highway speed driving. Neither one is right or wrong or good or bad. They're just testing different use cases. But one thing we can say with certainty is that you can't compare the test results of the EPA test to the results of the CLTC test and call it an apples to apples comparison like what the Carbuzz journalist did here. So when the journalist said that quote, 
which means this humble, oddly named Chinese sedan has more range than all but two EVs currently on sale in the US. He was flat out factually and inarguably wrong. In fact, if we look at Tesla's lineup using the CLTC test, every single model other than their cheapest Model 3 gets a higher range than the C385. And even the cheapest lowest range Model 3 is only about 25 miles off. And while many of the US sold EVs aren't currently tested using the CLTC standard, I would be willing to bet if they were, a lot of them would have a higher range than the C385 because of how favorable the test is for EVs. It just keeps getting worse. It looks like this article is getting its information from a tweet from an automotive journalist named Greg Cable, which is fine, I guess, except it poses a problem. While this journalist says that the range is more than 600 kilometers using the CLTC test, I couldn't actually find anything online confirming that number. Now, I could be totally wrong here, but I looked everywhere and I couldn't find an official range test number. To be totally fair, given that this is a Chinese company selling a China-focused vehicle and I'm living in the US, it just might be that I'm not able to look up the information or that it's in Mandarin or something. But I'll say this, I read a bunch of articles on this car and that range number and every single one of them that listed a source for their data, the source was from this random tweet from Greg Cable, and nothing against Greg, but that tweet is hardly an official test result. So let's recap this article and I'll keep things light and fun. This author writes an article about how this Chinese sedan has more range than all but two EVs in the US, and that it's much cheaper than those two. He then goes on to compare the results of two different testing methodologies to prove his point, which makes zero sense, but worse than that, this new Chinese C385 doesn't have an official range result and doesn't have an official price. This article's research just goes from bad to worse the more you read, and the part that really pains me is that this guy is getting paid to write this garbage. And you can basically go with two options here. Either the author didn't realize that you can't compare two vastly different test results to each other, in which case he's incredibly incompetent and probably shouldn't be a quote unquote automotive expert with an audience, or, and this is a big or, he's being paid by someone, and I'm not gonna name names, to write an article that's intentionally misleading and negative about Tesla. Both of these prospects are absolutely horrible and I'll let you decide which one is worse and which one is true. And if you're asking yourself why an automotive journalist would be paid or motivated to write anti-Tesla stories, I have a bunch of videos on that exact subject, but I'll give you the vastly oversimplified version here. The reason is because they have a financial motivation to cover Tesla negative. Let me explain. Media outlets like Carbuzz make a significant portion of their revenue by selling ads to other companies. For example, when I go to read this article, I get Ford or Nissan ads on the side. The relationship with the automotive companies go beyond just advertising. It invades nearly every single aspect of the media outlet. For example, if a company is coming out with a new car or they want to build hype around an old one to sell more models, they might pay a media outlet to write an article about that car. But you, the reader, might never know that this article that you just read from a media outlet was actually paid to be written by Ford or GM. They'll even give the media outlet specific details that they need to mention in the article that puts their product in the best light possible. The relationships between these media outlets and the automotive manufacturers is incredibly strong and it has been for decades. And why automotive manufacturers? Well, there are a bunch of reasons, but one of them is that if you look at a list of the top 25 global advertisers by total spending, Volkswagen, Toyota, General Motors, and Ford are all in there. This is billions of dollars a year that's going into paying media outlets just like this one. And if you're a traditional media outlet, a significant amount of your revenue comes from these car manufacturers. Many media outlets have a financial incentive to cover these car manufacturers in a positive light. If they were to write a terrible article about a Ford, for example, Ford might be less likely to come with them with a lucrative deal in the future. Not to mention, if you're being paid by automotive manufacturers for advertising, there is a major conflict of interest in covering them. It's a constant give and take with these media outlets not wanting to bite the hand that is actively feeding them. So if that's the case, why is Tesla any different than the likes of GM, Ford, Volkswagen, and all the others? Well, it's simple. 
Tesla doesn't pay for advertising. So when these media outlets cover two companies and one of them is paying them and Tesla isn't, well, you can see why they might have a hard time trying to remain biased, even if they were trying. That being said, I think with a lot of these media outlets, the idea of trying to remain as unbiased as possible is a completely foreign one. They are simply mouthpieces for whoever pays them. And we've even found cases of legacy automotive companies paying for the media outlets to lie about Tesla and deceive their audience. So a word to the wise when reading articles like this one, follow the money. As always, huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. They're the reason I can keep making videos like this one. Without them, I wouldn't be able to do it. If you liked this video, give me a like and subscribe. If you loved it, think about tossing some support my way on Patreon, but only if you have spare income. If money is tight, I'd rather you saved it for you. Also, if you find an article that's pushing an agenda or spreading misinformation like this car buzz article, send it my way. My info is down below like always. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. See you all in the next one. Peace.